Did you know you can actually farm 1 million runes in under 5 minutes with this optimised version of the best rune farm in Elden Ring? That's right. In my last video, I showcased several different variations of the Mogwin Palace Crow and Albanoric rune farm strat, and in that video, I showed you how to farm 1 million runes in under 7 minutes. Well, thanks to the influx of comments, community suggestions, and a new addition from the Shadow of the Erdtree DLC, we can now smash that previous record. But while I'm going over the strat details, you can keep an eye on the full strat run here in the top right corner of the screen, with zero edits and a timer to keep track. Start the timer please! So, while that's going on, in the previous strat, utilising the Golden Scarab Talisman, Gold Pickled Falfoot, a Bow and Arrow and the Sacred Relic Sword, you could farm the Blistering Crow and send two waves of gold at the resting Old Benurix to earn a staggering 79,709 runes in just under 30 seconds. For this optimised strat, we will no longer be farming the Crow or doing two waves of gold, and instead, we'll just be farming the Old Benurix with one wave of gold from the Sacred Relic Sword. While this will reduce the amount of runes we acquire per lap, it will drastically reduce the amount of time it takes too. So this will increase the amount of runes per second that we can acquire. For this optimised strat, to do one lap from resting at the grace to returning to it takes 14 seconds. And depending on how many old Benerics you manage to take out with each wave of gold, you can obtain anywhere between 40,000 and 55,000 runes per lap. Meaning we can achieve 1 million runes in 4 minutes and 50 seconds. And this does include the time to apply any consumable buffs that we will be using. So next, you need to boost up, and as previously, we will be utilising the Golden Scarab Talisman, which increases our rune acquisition by 20%. And in addition to this, we will also be using a new consumable from the Shadow of the Erdtree DLC, the Golden Horn Tender, which increases rune acquisition by 40% for 3 minutes. Now, in addition to these rune boosts, I want to utilise a little-known mechanic in most From Software games called Overkill. For those of you who know this already, just bear with me. And for those who don't, well, overkill is a mechanic that means when you deal 150% of an enemy's total HP in one hit, you will be rewarded with an additional 20% in runes. So with this in mind, we need to know how much health the old Benerics have. Well, in a new game, they have 1,190 HP, meaning we need to do 1,785 damage on our first hit to them to trigger the rune boost. Now, one thing to note with the Wave of Gold skill is that at longer ranges, the total damage dealt reduces by around 20%. So to ensure that we meet the overkill requirements of 150% damage to the old Benurix furthest away means we will need to further increase our damage output taking this 20% reduction into account. Effectively dealing 170% of the old Benurix total HP, which works out at around 2023 damage per hit. So, with the Sacred Relic Sword, there are several ways to help increase the damage per hit. Firstly, and most simply, you can upgrade the weapon, as the more it is upgraded, the more damage output the weapon does. In addition, or in place of this, you can level your Faith stat, as the Wave of Gold skill deals Holy Damage and scales with Faith, so the more you level up Faith, the more Holy Damage you will deal. To further increase our damage output for this optimised strat, we will be utilising several talismans, and they are the Sacred Scorpion Charm, which raises Holy Damage by 12%. It does also increase physical damage taken to us by 10%, but as we won't be getting hit, we can ignore this aspect of the charm. The next talisman we will use is the Ritual Sword Talisman. This will also raise our attack power by 10%, while our HP is at its maximum. The third talisman we will use is Marika's Scar Seal, and this raises Mind, Intelligence, Faith and Arcane by 3 levels each, but it will increase damage taken by 10%, which again, for now we can ignore. And finally, as per the original strat, we will also be using the Golden Scarab Talisman, which will increase our rune acquisition by 20%. There are several other talismans available that can be used to increase your attack power, such as the Warrior Jar Shard, which boosts the attack power of skills by 10%, or the Shard of Alexander, which greatly boosts the attack power of skills by 15%. There are also several talismans that will increase your faith, such as the Two Finger Heirloom Talisman, which raises faith by 5 levels, or Marika's Saw Seal, which raises mind, intelligence and faith by 5 levels, but increases damage taken by 15%. So, just use which combination of talismans you have available, along with upgrading your Sacred Relic Sword and levelling up Faith. As long as you make it so that you deal at least 2023 damage per hit, you are good to go. So, as already mentioned, for this optimised strat we will be using the Golden Scarab Talisman to increase our runes by 20%, and the Overkill mechanic to increase it by another 20%, but thanks to a handy consumable item from the DLC, we can further boost this rune acquisition by another 40%, and the item in question is the Golden Horn Tender, which like its base game counterpart, the Gold Pickled Falfoot, will last for 3 minutes. So for this strat, we will need two of these to fully optimise the run. Unfortunately, the effects of the Golden Horn Tender and the Gold Pickled Falfoot cannot be stacked, as when you use one, it cancels out the other. Finally, in order to optimise this run as much as possible, I have also chosen to remove all armour from my character to reduce my weight. This helps shave off a few more seconds when running back and forth between the Albanerix and the Sight of Grace. It is worth noting that this strat won't work if you try and teleport back to the Sight of Grace, as while that would be quicker than running back, it will remove any Golden Horn Tender that you have currently active, and as it stands, this consumable cannot be crafted, and there are only a limited amount to be found in the Shadow of the Erdtree DLC, so use them wisely. 
So now that you're all set up, the run can begin. From the palace approach site of Grace in Mogwin Palace, first consume the Golden Horn Tender, and then head down the hill to this spot here, and position yourself slightly diagonal to the right. Then press the left trigger to unleash your wave of gold. Turn around and run back to the site of Grace and rest. Personally, I like to turn my camera around as I'm resting, so that I'm facing back down the hill when the animation loads back up, and simply rinse and repeat this 20 times. But remember to keep an eye on your buffs, and as soon as the Golden Horn Tender runs out, consume another one. And as you can see, in 4 minutes 50 seconds using this strat we have now managed to acquire 1 million runes, shaving off 2 whole minutes from the best rune farm strat that Elden Ring has to offer. And for now, that's it! I really hope that you have found this optimised rune farm guide useful, and more importantly, I hope the information serves you well as you take on your journey through both the Lands Between and the Land of Shadow. Let me know in the comments section below how you got on with this optimised strat, and if you managed to find any other ways to both boost the rune acquisition or to reduce the time it takes. As always, thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more Elden Ring content.